Hey Hoopers, it's Deanne Love here and in this tutorial I'm going to teach a fairly advanced little combination that includes going from upper body or shoulder hooping, using some breaks to go into a shoulder hooping barrel roll and then into an isolation barrel roll. So you're transitioning the hoop on and off your upper body. It's so beautiful, it's something that I really love to move into because there's this real sense of freedom once you understand body placement, the planes, and then the energy shift that has to go behind it. I am gonna break it down and I do wanna to say to you that if barrel rolls are super new to you, then just give yourself some time. There are some other great tutorials hanging out on YouTube. Uh, barrel rolls are, they're fun, they're so fun and I honestly really encourage you to practice little by little. They were a really early part of my hoop experience and I'm so grateful that I had all of that on body training really early on in my hoop experience because it has allowed me this expansive freedom. It's also allowed me to change my body to be really strong year after year, practice after practice injury free, aligned and just really powerful and embodied in everything I do during the day because of these on body practices. If you are using a really heavy hoop, like a big chunky fitness hoop, you might like to actually, you will like to go down to a, not necessarily a smaller diameter, but a smaller hoop pipe because it can be really dangerous uh, hooping on your body with any of those really big kind of wobbly fitness hoops. Because I have been hooping for so many years, I am using a 90 centimeter poly pro. You might like to use a smaller poly pro. Just remember that anytime the diameter is smaller, you're going to need to move faster. So find a hoop that feels really right for your body. All right, so let's break it down a little. What I was doing is shoulder hooping in my dominant direction, breaking when I feel ready, moving into vertical, catching the barrel roll, coming back to the front, moving through an isolation barrel roll and folding the hoop out. So, may or may not seem <laughs> like it's an easy path for you. So let's kind of break it down. You're going to need to know how, generally, how to shoulder hoop. You don't have to be able to shoulder hoop for a long time here. Another thing that you might like to, or that you will like to, be able to do is a hand-to-hand -hand break. You don't have to do it for a consistently long amount of time because all that we're doing is breaking the hoop, giving it to the other hand and playing with momentum into a barrel roll. Uh, another thing that you might, that might kind of help you is to know how to do an inside hand grip isolation barrel roll, which is where the hoop is at the front, at the back as you turn 360 and it stays on the plane. So here are some things that are really going to help you to think about, to move into when you are doing these plane transitions. And by that, I mean you're going from vertical to, sorry, you're going from horizontal to vertical with your hoop. And you're also wanting to do a 360 turn that gives you balance. And that means picking a point either on the wall or a point that you come back to because that's going to help you to complete your barrel roll and stay in balance. So I'm going to break down the transitions, come along with me, see how you flow and go and any kind of troubleshooting that comes into it, I'll help you as we go along. So starting off moving in your dominant direction, for me I'm moving around to my left, just kind of getting some freedom here, bringing the shoulders into this nice kind of flat plane. When it feels good for you, we're going to move into the next transition, which is if it's going to the left, you're going to use your left hand. If it's going to the right, you're going to use your right hand. So as we come around, we break the hoop on the outside and then we push it into the chest and break it on the opposite side and instantly bend forward. So around to the left, break, break, forward. And by moving forward, what's going to happen is you're instantly in flow going to pick that point that is your focus, your center, your first position. So that's where you want to ultimately, after some practice, come back to. And that's going to help you to complete your barrel roll, as I said. So you can practice just moving your body into alignment. You want to have your toes facing that point. I'm actually gonna face you. So you want your toes facing that point, your knees parallel, your 
thighs engaged, so nice and strong there, and your hips in a comfortable position, bent knees, bent hips, and a long back with an open chest. So once you <laughs> have worked out how to go from standing to that first position, then you're on your way to moving into a barrel roll. Now, because my hoop is in my right hand, I'm gonna push it around to the left and I'm going to turn to the left. You might be in your opposite. So as I push my hoop, I'm going to step around a half turn, which means that my toes were facing you and as I step around, my toes want to be facing exactly halfway behind. And that's going to help you because if you look at your hoop, if it is on the vertical plane, it is spinning and you want to keep it on that plane. So if your toes are facing forwards and you push the hoop into your chest and then your toes are kind of facing like over there, you're taking the hoop on a different trajectory. You want it to stay here and to do that, you want toes facing forwards, half turn, toes facing away. It's going to help you to keep the hoop in that alignment. So notice what I did there. So break, break, bend, toes facing forward, half turn and catch. So what happens is I stand up, I look at my hoop, my palms go up towards and catch with two hands. And what I, most of the motion here came from pushing the hoop gently enough into my chest and my opposite side shoulder to take the rotation around, not too hard, not too fast. So finding that momentum. So we go break, break, opposite side shoulder. And I do a very gentle kind of bringing around. I'm not trying to bat it anywhere, but just this opposite side shoulder. If it's in your right hand and you're moving around to the left, just bring the hoop around. As you stand up, you stabilize in your feet, your legs, your hips, you open up and your hoop should be touching your booty and your palms are up and you're going to continue that half turn one more time. So <laughs> from here, we go break, bend, around and around again. So I am putting a lot of the weight, a lot of the tension on my left hip as I pivot around, step, around, step. And I'm really doing all of the stabilization on this side of my body for this particular move. So around and around, break, break, center of gravity, but then a lot of the, the energy and the effort and the contact on my left side, because it's in my right hand, around, catch, around, catch. Now this, my right side is kind of doing like the swinging or it's using the weight, but then, most of the downward pressure weight is on my left side. Okay, so once I get around to here, where I'm in, catch, take it around, where I'm in this first position, the hoop is now off my body and I'm ready to go into an isolation barrel roll. I tend to cross my right leg over my left, pivot all the way and then step back out. That, that is generally my footwork, but you might have a different kind of footwork. And you're also going to work with how much pace you want to give into this spin. Maybe you want to do it really fast. Now, if you do <laughs> want to do, if you want to speed up your isolation barrel roll, you really need to make sure that you've broken it down and understand the mechanics and the body placement that is going to be safe for you. If you are not doing your isolation barrel rolls in a kind of really relaxed and comfortable position, if your arms get stuck and you're really jarring your shoulders, don't do that, don't go fast. <laughs> you are going to put your neck out or hurt your back. It's not even worth it. So come back, speed, the fastest you can possibly go is not the goal. Ease, flow, fluidity, that's where it's at. It doesn't matter how fast or slow it is. It's about feeling good. And if you are not in the right position to move through this with pace, then you're going to hurt yourself, which doesn't feel good. So for me, again, I cross over, I turn, and I come back around. And what it feels like is almost like a ripple effect. So my feet do the grounding, it comes up into my hips, my hips are doing the work, and then the hoop follows me. 
My arms bring it around. But they're not too disjointed. If you don't have that kind of undulation up, feet, hips, arms, upper body, um, it's like one wave that will give you the pace and the freedom without any of the jarring or kind of getting caught or not knowing where. Now, having said that, if you do want to slow it down, there's no reason why you can't pivot and pivot. Again, for me, I'm going in that same direction, so I step around, step around. When I get to the front here, because, there's, because I've built this really fast momentum, I want to fold my hoop out to kind of balance me. And sometimes I will go so fast that I'll step off um, the trajectory or like the balance point. So just kind of coming back into centre, it helps me to fold my hoop down and again. It's just something that feels like it's right for me. So shoulders, break, bend, catch at the top, around again, <laughs> and fold. So, so what happened just there was I did not plant my second foot. I didn't shift my weight. I left all the weight in my left side, and that just meant that I was going to fall somewhere, back or forward. Um, so bringing the weight back down to center line, whatever helps you kind of navigate that or feel that, whether that's planting your foot on the ground or whether that's drawing your pelvis down so you have this really centered gravity line. Um, <clears throat> something else that happens when we move around is <laughs> we might push, our, push this leg really high up um, because we kind of want to, for me, it, it feels like I get that flight. And so if this leg really does come up off the ground, then you're going to have to extra, give extra attention to bringing it back down. So from here, shoulders, break, break, turn, catch, turn, and you might push, <laughs> push to bring it back, then fold and fold. So again, notice the more that I push off or the more that I bring my, all of my weight over, and it's not just my hips, I have to shift my body back in to this centre line. Otherwise, I'm going to feel really wobbly, put too much pressure on my ankles, and I'll be off, off on some other plane. <clears throat> Another tip that can really help um, with the barrel rolls is if you just want to kind of practice come from here, so you're not like, oh, I've got these things that I'm going to break, break, and then turn, and then go... Um, if you just want to come from the bent forward position and you can work with how much energy do I need to give my little push of the hoop into my chest to turn around and catch and turn around and stop and turn around. <clears throat> that time I pivoted on the opposite foot just to kind of show you. So instead of pushing on my right, <laughs> you can push. Uh, sorry, on my left foot down, you can push on your right. Does that make sense? So if you want to play around with balance on your left and right, so this is for the isolation barrel roll at the end where the hoop is off, you can pivot on your left leg by pushing off with your right. <laughs> it's hard from a standstill. Or you can go in the same direction and pivot on your right leg by pushing off with your left. <laughs> um, and the beautiful part of this is that you will feel a sense of flow. So ultimately where I want to get with, my, with all of this is to feel lightness, to breathe, break, feel so much lightness here. And you will notice maybe you saw a difference there, maybe you didn't. The, the feeling that I feel in my on-body barrel roll, and this is a catching barrel roll, you can do this continuously without catching same same concepts with the planes and the footwork is that it's almost like I want to breathe exhale as I go forward and inhale as I come up so as the body is contracted I'm like 
and it doesn't have to be that forceful, um, but that's the feeling that I want to get. So I am, as I'm moving forward, I am releasing any of the heaviness or the tension from my body. And as I inhale and I open up my chest, I'm becoming buoyant. It means that I'm starting to fly. I'm starting to feel that opening sensation. And in the beginning, it can be like, wait, I've got to breathe out. And like it can feel like a lot. But ultimately, after a while of moving through it, you're going to feel like as you go down, you exhale and ah, inhale, exhale on the way. <clears throat> and obviously, it might be really subtle in the beginning, but it's that feeling of buoyancy that you're opening up to your vowel rolls. Okay, I know there's a lot to think about there. Ultimately, you want to make sure that your body feels in alignment, that there's not jarring, that you are feeling balanced and that you're feeling accomplished. So little by little, do the little things, play into it. It does take time. Connect with your, um, your palms and the outside of your arms and also rippling up from the footwork to the hips, to the chest, playing with breath and when you do feel like it's starting to float and expand and be more joyful, leave me a comment down below or get in touch if it is really challenging and you need a few more tips. These, these things are quite advanced. However, when you get there, you just feel so, so free, so accomplished. And that is a huge part of continuing the journey of hooping. So let me know down below. Check out some of the other tutorials on barrel rolls around the internet or on my YouTube channel here. Don't forget to subscribe and come and hang out with me on Instagram. My name over there is at DeanneLoveXO. Big hoop love and total freedom and bliss to you. Mwah.